The myth becomes real when a group of soldiers on a casual training exercise goes to a forest and accidentally enters the area of werewolves. They appear on the full moon, and tonight is that night. The thrill, terror, and trauma of dealing with it will keep you fully immersed in the movie until the very end. The movie begins when a hiking couple goes on vacation in the Scottish Highlands. They sip their drinks when the girl gifts a little silver sword to her beloved knight. They lie down in their camp before going to sleep. But someone from outside unzips the tent. Before long, a strange hand pulls the girl's legs, and despite the boy trying so hard to save her, he cannot bring her back. Instead, the only thing he gets is her blood all over his face. He sits there in terror, unable to grab and use his small sword as her savior knight. Two hours earlier that day in North Wales, a special ops team member, Cooper, survives a training exercise where he was not caught after approximately 23 hours. Captain Ryan likes him and wants him to be a part of his team. But before that, he has to shoot the dog that has been following him throughout the training. Cooper refuses to obey and kill the dog pointlessly. This infuriates Captain Ryan, and despite passing all the steps successfully, he rejects Cooper. Cooper angrily attacks Ryan, but after warning him for the last time that he won't forgive him again, Ryan leaves him. In his anger, he shoots the dog himself. Four weeks later, a helicopter carrying soldiers lands in the Scottish Highlands. All the men, along with Sarge, get into position as they are on training in this area. However, Joe is sulking because he has to miss the football match between France and England for this wretched training. Cooper is now part of this group as he never joined Special Ops. He briefs Sarge on the routes to be followed. Sarge advises him to be patient, and they start walking along the road. As they stop to catch their breath, one of them tells the story of a couple who disappeared about a month ago from the same area they are in. There are stories about who killed them, but no one has seen the killer or found their bodies. Everyone laughs at the story and resumes their walk, but they don't know that crazy Captain Ryan is chasing their group as he still has a vendetta against Cooper. He reports back to the base about the movement of the group. On the other hand, as night falls, everyone talks about their fears. Some fear castration, others spiders, women, and penalty shootouts. Sarge tells the story about a maiden Kuwait who had a Satan tattoo on his butt because he believed that his soul belonged to God. But it was up to Satan to save his skin. So he carved the tattoo and one night he stepped on a tank mine. His body was shredded into pieces, but the only part that survived was his skin with the Satan tattoo. It was a bit imperfect. This taught Sarge to keep an open mind about the possibilities. They toast to their deceased mate, and suddenly a body falls to the floor. Without thinking, Terry opens fire, but it turns out to be a dead cow that fell out of nowhere. The dead cow had nail marks on its body and nothing more. Terrified, Terry requests Sarge to call the camp using the radio, but Sarge rejects the idea, insisting they tackle the situation themselves. Meanwhile, Captain Ryan is looking around with binoculars in the middle of the night when something attacks him from behind. But before it can reach him, he opens fire. It's dawn, and Sarge once again rejects Terry's suggestion to report last night's cow slaughter to the office. They resume walking, and Sarge senses something unusual. Following the track, he sees chopped meat pieces on the ground, and after a few meters, they accidentally step on blood. The whole territory looks like it was plundered last night, with a lot of guns and ammo scattered around. Suddenly, Captain Ryan lifts his head to warn them to get out of here, as they will return soon. That's when they examine him and find that he is badly shivering and injured. Meanwhile, they try to connect to the base camp by finding radio signals, but the radio fuses are all broken and they cannot connect. Cooper tells Sarge that he knows Ryan and they put a bandage on his wounds. They want to shift Ryan somewhere to provide medical treatment. It's getting dark, and they set their positions and reload their guns before the enemy attacks. However, Ryan terrifies Sarge's boys by telling them that ammunition won't kill them. Suddenly, they hear voices and start running out of the jungle, taking Ryan with them. Bruce is already too afraid of the whole situation. When he catches sight of a running creature, he tries to pull the trigger in that direction, but his gun does not work so he starts running blindly, but a pointed log pierces his chest. All of a sudden, someone snatches away his body. On the other hand, Sarge hears the enemy approaching 
and before hiding, he finds Bruce's corpse. Suddenly, an enemy attacks Sarge and guts him. Before the enemy can finish Sarge off, Cooper opens fire at him, and the enemy runs away. Sarge somehow covers his intestines with his clothes and starts running away from the dangerous area along with the others. They keep firing until, at the end of the forest, they find a car. A girl asks them to get in hurriedly, but the enemy attacks the car, and she cannot start the car for a while. Finally, they chop off the enemy's hand hanging from the car's roof, and in the meantime, the car starts. The girl shares that she heard the gunshots and rushed here to help. Now there is only one house, which belongs to her relatives in the nearby area, where they can stay. Cooper goes inside the house first and checks the whole area. Surprisingly, food is being cooked in the kitchen and the table is set, but there is no one in the house. Suddenly, he hears a voice and opens the door. A dog comes out of the attic and hugs him. After going outside, he lets everybody know that the area is clear and they can stay inside for the night. All the soldiers sit at the dinner table while the girl protests that they should not eat without the house owner's permission. But they are too hungry and are in a hurry to leave as well because Sarge and Ryan need instant medical intervention. There is no phone within 50 miles, or she shares that it will be a four-hour drive if they want to take the patients to the nearby town. This is the only house in the whole area. Bruce takes a soldier to check the vehicle outside, but its dashboard is totally messed up. They can sense a strange enemy watching them from nearby. Hence, the soldier lights the bomb and before running, throws it on the car. Just before the strange enemy, which looks like a werewolf, could reach them, they enter the house and shut the door. Meanwhile, the dog pulls intestines out of Sarge's stomach, and Ryan, who already hates dogs, is about to kill it with a gun. But Terry, too terrified of the situation, pukes on Ryan's head. Furious, Ryan hardly controls his anger and heads toward the washroom to clean up. Cooper instructs the soldiers to barricade the doors and boil water in as many pans as they can. While the girl warns them that they are up against a brutal enemy that works in groups, Ryan is surprisingly all right now. Spoon knows that their enemy is not only outnumbered, but stronger than them, and he is ready to face death. Cooper does not believe that their enemy is an actual werewolf. Up until now, they have only been in myths and stories. He takes Sarge upstairs to close the wound while Spoon finds a shiny silver sword in the house, which he loves. Like the soldiers used to do in the Vietnam War, Cooper decides to put together Sarge's body using glue. He gives him whiskey to drink, and Megan helps him in the process. However, the process is so painful that Sarge insists Cooper punch him in the face to knock him out. At the same time, he feels indebted to Cooper for saving his life in the toughest situation. Anyway, they close the wound, and Megan assures Cooper that the unknown enemy is a werewolf, as she came for wildlife research but stayed when she found evidence of their presence. Now Cooper believes her and tells Joe that there is no chance of running away as they are surrounded by a family of werewolves. They hunt down their targets on the full moon of each month, and approximately 15 hikers or travelers disappear every month. Suddenly, Ryan declares rudely that he does not need any of them, even though he needed them badly while he was dying in the forest two hours ago. He tells them he is fine alone and needs no one. This raises suspicion in Cooper's mind as Ryan was scratched by werewolves, and it is a myth that those who are scratched turn into werewolves on the full moon. So he wants to check Ryan's body but Ryan points the gun at him to resist. Terry throws the gun away and they check the wound, which is miraculously covered in barely two hours. The story is true and Ryan will turn into a werewolf any minute. Suddenly the apartment lights get dim as werewolves can see better in the dark and they are once again preparing for an attack. They barricade every door and fire many rounds of ammunition, but it scares them away rather than killing them. Joe throws his hand grenade out of the window to save the room. A werewolf grabs Terry from the neck and Cooper chops its hand off with a sword. They discover a number of gas cylinders and suddenly Cooper realizes that Sarge is lying alone in his room. He runs there and finds him surrounded by werewolves. Cooper manages to grab the gun from under his bed and wakes Sarge. Meanwhile, they shoot bullets and scare the werewolves away from the room. Suddenly a silence prevails a werewolf takes Terry away from the window. Megan runs toward the window and finds only his blood there. As Cooper returns, he is angrier to see another partner missing. 
Ryan has started looking at Megan suspiciously as she has deliberately appeared in the jungle when they were in trouble and brought them here. It's just 12 a.m. and Megan encourages Cooper to stay and wait until the sun rises. Only then will the brutal werewolves turn back into humans. They only have to fight against them for six more hours. Suddenly, she reveals that she knows the family of werewolves as she visited following the rumors. She moves to the window and the werewolves howl at her as if she is a close acquaintance. Megan reveals that there is another vehicle in the barn and they can get it if someone lures the werewolves in another direction. Bruce takes responsibility and lights a fire outside. Just as the werewolves run towards him, he leaves the fire and runs towards the house. Taking advantage of the situation, Joe runs towards the barn and starts the car by sparking the wires together. In the meantime, he looks at Terry, who is drenched in blood, asking for help. But a werewolf bites into his neck and he dies miserably. Joe starts the car but knows that someone is in the back seat. He tries to resist to save his life. But by the time Cooper and Spoon open the back seat, a flood of Joe's blood flows out and a werewolf emerges from the car. Megan has started behaving oddly as time passes. She plays the piano while looking at family pictures. Meanwhile, Cooper searches for Joe's body outside, but it's gone and they have only a limited number of ammunition rounds left. Ryan taunts Cooper for his failure to win against the werewolves, claiming he is too cowardly to take any extra steps. Despite Cooper's refusal to obey his command, Ryan never gave up on him. Ryan wanted him on his team, which is why he got approval from the army to send this group for training there. Sarge becomes angry about losing so many men in this fight and questions their place in it. Ryan brutally informs him that he and his men are just expendables. Ryan made a gap in the enemy line and used it as bait for Cooper, knowing he would take it, and he did. Sarge angrily punches Ryan, but he suddenly behaves differently. His nails elongate and his eyes change. All of a sudden, he transforms into a werewolf. They stab him with a sword and fire ammunition at him, but he jumps out of the window and disappears into the dark. Now they realize they are living in the house of werewolves and they are going to kill them sooner rather than later. Folklore states that werewolves are afraid of silver, so they gather all the silver from the kitchen floor. Suddenly, Megan suggests they can burn the werewolves' hideout to finish them once and for all. Sarge knows that he was injured by werewolves and, like Ryan, will turn into one at any time. He shows his wounds have healed and suspects that Megan might be wrong about the werewolves hiding in the barn. Sarge wants him to run away while he investigates further, but Cooper refuses to leave Sarge behind at any cost, despite Sarge insisting that he is no longer a normal human. Cooper gets in the car while Spoon tears the gas pipe. It starts leaking and Cooper jumps out as the car enters the barn. Sarge sets the fire and the whole barn explodes. Luckily, Cooper enters the house before the blast, but when he meets Megan, she apologizes for using him to escape this place admitting he too proved useless. She only came here to explore nature, but feels trapped with no way out. She starts turning into a werewolf herself as it's 3 a.m., the time of the month when she transforms. Before this, she unlocked the barricades and let all the werewolves enter the house. They emerge from behind her, and using firearms, Sarge, Cooper, and Spoon hide in the rooms. Spoon closes the door, but a werewolf attacks him in the kitchen. After a decent fight, the werewolves grab his neck and kill him. On the other hand, Cooper and Sarge try to keep the werewolves away from their hideout using fire spray. They make their way into the room and hide inside a cupboard. Using firearms, they make a hole in the floor and jump down into the kitchen. Soon, Sarge finds a secret door in the floor and realizes he is going to become a werewolf. Before this happens, he insists Cooper hide while he sets the whole house on fire to finish the werewolves. Cooper agrees and jumps down while Sarge waits for the werewolves to enter the kitchen to kill them and opens the gas pipe in the meantime. As soon as he starts transforming into a werewolf, the other werewolves come inside and he sets the place on fire. Cooper hears everything burning down, but Ryan, now a werewolf, is still alive and comes to kill Cooper. Just as he is about to attack, the dog intervenes and attacks Ryan, causing him to fall. Meanwhile, Cooper finds a small silver sword, said to be the killer of werewolves, and pierces it into Ryan's chest. He dies on the spot. Cooper leaves the house at dawn, alone with the dog. 
The movie ends here.